Hi, I'm Pastor Mike Custer, pastor at Bible Baptist Church in Grand Forks, North Dakota. It's Tuesday morning, April the 14th, 2020. I'm so glad to be able to join you for a few minutes this morning and share with you some thoughts from God's Word today. Have you ever wondered why it seems sometimes that heaven is silent? You pray and pray and you seek the Lord's leadership in some area and it seems like there's no answer forthcoming. I remember uh, years ago hearing somebody say, uh, where did you find that? Well, the the response was the last place I looked. Well, that kind of has a, a double meaning because as soon as you found it, you stopped looking. And so it was certainly the last place that you looked. In some cases, You searched and searched and searched until you could think of nowhere else to search until you thought of that one last location, and that's where that lost item was. And so we can all identify with that on some level. And also, if you know the Lord and if you've known the Lord for a while, you can also identify with the idea that sometimes heaven seems silent. And you need an answer from the Lord, but it seems like there's no answer forthcoming. And what's the reason for that? If you're like me, you're inclined to be impatient and you like instant answers. You like things to happen immediately. You don't like to wait around for things to come about. And if you are needing an answer, you'd like to have it right now, if not sooner. Well, I was thinking about some verses in the Psalms on this subject. And I think that we're not the only ones who sometimes feel this way because the psalmist David did as well. Listen to Psalm 109, verse 1 on this subject. Says, Verse 1 says, Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. And he's stating here, I don't, don't fail to answer me. I praise you, I honor you, I desire to please you, and I believe in you. And don't hold, don't withhold the answers that I need. Hold, hold not forth thy voice and your answer. And yet sometimes it does seem like heaven is silent in some areas. And we wonder why. Just a few verses prior to this in the previous Psalm, Psalm 108, the Bible says this, verse 10, Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Wilt not thou, O God, who hast Cast us off, and wilt thou now wilt not thou, O God, go forth with our hosts? Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. And the psalmist is stating very unequivocally here that he understands there's nobody else to go to. I'm reminded of when when uh, Christ challenged his own disciples in John chapter six. And some people had just, some of those, those would-be disciples, you know, had, had gone their own way, had ceased to follow Christ because they, did, they were offended by his, uh, by his use of the terminologies that he used relative to his body being uh, the bread of life and his blood being essential to life. And, and in John chapter 6, he said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no you have no part with me. And they couldn't take it. They were offended by it and they left. And he said to his disciples, will ye go away also? I think Peter's answer is notable there. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And that's kind of what the psalmist was writing at the end of Psalm 108. He said, you're the only one who really has answers. We can't go to the ungodly. The heathen don't have any answers. You give us help because you're the only one who really can. And this is how it kind of boils out and shakes out for God's people sometimes. When we need an answer from the Lord or we think we need it right now and the answer is not forthcoming, rather than going somewhere else, we say to ourselves, you know, he's the only one. He's the only one who has real answers. And so we've got to just wait on the Lord. And often, I believe, God has a very specific intent in that scenario as well. He wants us to wait. And I think that I think that God delights in his children just resorting to confidence and trust in him, even when they don't get the answers that they feel they need at the moment. He desires that we just wait on him and trust him anyway. 
And so the next time you find yourself needing an answer from the Lord, or at least wanting an answer from the Lord, and it seems like heaven is silent and God's not giving you guidance or direction, it could be that he's just trying to test your faith to see how strongly you really believe in him. You know, you go back over the years, if you've known the Lord for a while, you would say he's never, ever let us down. He's never failed to be faithful and true. And you know what? His character has not changed. He's not going to fail now either. And so just maintain your confidence in him. And even though heaven seems silent, I heard a a, a good song by that title uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and it was really a blessing when heaven seems silent. Even though it seems like God's not answering, it's not that he can't hear. It's not that his... His uh, hand is shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. Sometimes we need to get right with the Lord, and other times he just wants us to trust him, just to just to buckle down and and keep our eyes on him and just wait and determine that we're going to have confidence in what he does, no matter whether it's to our liking or not. These are wonderful reminders for us, and sometimes the Spirit of God would choose to not answer just for those kinds of reasons, to put our faith to the test. How are you doing? And how are you holding with your confidence in the Lord? He'll never let you down. God bless you today.